Today we're going to learn what it means to talk about negative angles, and we will use those when we're drawing pictures. We will not enter any trig functions where we're doing sine of a negative angle in this course. We're still going to do all of those with positive acute angles when we evaluate with the calculator. But when we're drawing them, sometimes we need to talk about negative angles. It's not in the book, but we're going to go over converting back to polar after we have added vectors and how we have to store things on the calculator to be able to do that. The book also does linear regression, but we went ahead and did linear regression way back when because we didn't want to all be getting different answers on those problems. So if you're looking through the pages of the book, that's what you see in there, and that's why we aren't doing anything more with that. But it gives us a little bit of time to talk about converting back. You know that with a number line, when we talk about positive numbers, it means we go this direction, to the right. And when we talk about negative numbers, it means we go in exactly the opposite direction. So when I talk about angles, positive is going to mean I go in one direction, and a negative angle is only going to mean I go in the opposite direction. So we know that with a positive angle, we start on the positive x-axis, and we go up and to the left. It's called counterclockwise because that's the reverse of how the hands on a clock like the one here in the classroom would go. If we want to talk about a negative angle, we still start at the same place. Just like on the number line, we started at zero, whether we were going positive or negative. Start at the same place, but now we go exactly the opposite direction. We go down and around, and that's all that a minus sign in front of an angle means. And that way is called clockwise because that's the same direction that the hands on the clock turn. So if we have something like 5 at negative 320, and we're asked to draw it. Actually, let me go back one. I had another example down here. This one we're just going to draw first, and then we'll do that one. Forgot it was on the same side. So we just want to draw this one. So we start on the axis, the usual starting point. Because there's a negative sign inside here with the angle, we go down 30 degrees. So there's our 30 degree angle. And that's five long. And that's all that it means to have a negative in front of the angle. Now the one that I had up there, let's draw this one. And let's convert it to rectangular coordinates to the I hat and J hat. So we need to start at our usual starting point, go down and around. So I'm going to come to the, to the 90. That's 180, a half a circle. I've gone 270 degrees now in that direction. Need to keep on going. So about to there. So that was 320 degrees, just going around in the backwards direction from what I normally do. Now what I need for converting to polar coordinates, I need to know what is that little angle? Who can tell me how many degrees that is? Why? And how did you figure out that that was 40? So we knew that if we put the green and the red together, we had to have 360. So 360 minus uh, 320 gave us 40. Finish my picture here. I should label that that vector is five long. So if I wanted to write this in positive, positive form, I'd say five at 40 degrees is the very same vector. That's polar form because we're spinning around a pole. Rectangular means we talk about how far do we go across, how far do we go up and down, two side, drawing two sides of a rectangle. So we know that if we want to convert that, we know that we need 5 cosine 40 i hat and 5 sine 40 j hat. Because we really ended up in the first quadrant when we do our picture, we know that both of those have to be positive. And who's got your calculator out to punch those in for me? Madeline, 
what did you get for the first one? Uh, let me see what you have on that. Oh, I only want the five cosine 40 for the I hat part. So remember, you're just going to enter the I hat. You're just going to enter the J hat. What do you have? Abby? Okay, and then I'll let somebody else help us out. Thumbs up if you also got this. Ada, what you get on the other one? And both positives, right, everybody? Because we're in the first quadrant, so we better end up with plus and plus. Any questions with that one? Okay, then let's add one. And we only need to do this one last example. So we're going to add this and get our answer in rectangular form, like we've been doing, and then convert it to polar form. So we have to start with drawing our pictures like always. Negative 55 degrees means I have to go down and around first. So that's going to be a little more than halfway to the 90 degrees. So that means this angle was 55, and that was four long. And that quadrant, of course, is plus minus. So for that one, I'm going to have positive 4 cosine 55 for the i hat, but I'm going to have minus 4 sine 55 for the j hat. Does that make sense to everybody? OK, my other one now. This time I'm going in the positive direction because that's a positive angle. So let's say 90, 180, need to keep going. 270 is too far, so somewhere here in the third quadrant. So maybe about like that. Oh, this one's longer. So that's seven long. And if I went 227 degrees around there, how big is just my little angle in here that I need to use? What, Griff? 47. And hopefully everybody is comfortable with that was 180 to go the half circle. 47 more got us to the 227. That quadrant is minus minus. So I need minus 7 cosine 47 for the I hat and minus 7 sine 47 for the j hat. Do not be rushing ahead on this because we need to do this together so I can go through how we're going to store this. Question. Um, I'm getting 47. I need to take the black plus this little one to equal 227. Everybody else good with 47? Okay, so what I want us to do, is so I can get mine up at the very top so I can still see it while the calculator screen is up here. Let's enter that 4 cosine 55 minus 7 cosine 47 on our calculators. And hopefully it'll let me do it this way. Good. 4 trig cosine. 55 outside the parentheses minus 7 trig cosine 47. Is everybody getting negative 2.479682? Okay, so we're going to write that down for our i hat part with our three digits, but we're not going to go on to the next step yet. Negative two point. Okay, the six says I'm going to have to round it up. And since I've got a nine there, if it's easier, you can think about, oh, I need to take 79 and round that up one. So I've got four, round the 79 up one, and I have 80. And that's my I hat. Are we good with that? And now I want you to store that so that the calculator will remember all of these extra decimal places. To do that, we do control 
and then the variable button says STO up above it. So we hit that. This is I hat, so I'm going to not be at all original, and I'm going to name it I. So I push the I, and then I push enter. What did I hit there that I didn't mean to? There, now I got the I in. So now the calculator will remember all of those digits. Now we're going to do the same thing with J hat. So I want everybody to enter negative 4 sine 55 minus sine 47. And then we'll write that down, and then we'll store that as J hat, or as J. Oops. Answer. Negative 4. Not sure if you can read that from where you're sitting, but are you guys also getting negative 8.396? So we're going to write that down. That we also got minus 8.396 J hat. And that is our rectangular form of the answer like we're used to doing going to go ahead and draw my final picture. So if I took my one that was at 55 degrees and was only four or at negative 55 degrees and was only four long, and then I turn and I go this way for seven. Obviously, I haven't drawn it long enough yet. Notice I have minus and minus in my rectangular form of the answer. That tells me, oh, I need to end at Q3. So I don't dare start here or stop here because, well, clearly that's not seven long. It's shorter than the green one. But even if I'm getting here, I'm not sure if I've gone far enough yet or not. I need to make sure I go far enough that I end up over here in Q3. So the vector now that I want to write in polar form is this one. Does that make sense to everybody? We've been doing that quite a bit so far. Now what I need to find is my polar form for this answer. So I need to know how many degrees is that? And I need to know how long is that red vector. Everybody good with those are the things we need to find now. Okay, I'm not going to try to write these decimals on here, but I'm going to think about my picture here. This is my I hat and this is my J hat. Negative two point something to the left, negative eight point something down. Does that picture make sense as you look at it? Now I have a right triangle. So what I'm going to write down to get R is I am going to say I need to use the Pythagorean theorem, but I'm not going to write all those decimal digits in here. I'm just going to say I need to take I hat and square it, J hat and square it, so these two sides of the red right triangle, and then take the square root to get R. I'm going to do that with my calculator now. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't store my J, did I? Maybe you did, but I haven't stored mine. See how when I stored I, it said to it send that with an arrow to I? I haven't done that on J. So I still need to store that and then pick J for that one. And now the calculator is going to remember all of that. So to get the magnitude, I do control and then the X squared button that has the square root right up above it and enter in I squared plus j squared, enter, and hopefully we're all getting 8.7546. We're going to round that to three places. We don't need to store it. But for that, we got 8.755 when I rounded it to three places. 
act. And that's what I know so far on my final answer. But my work shows this, just the formula, but that's what I type in the calculator, right? So we always write down exactly how we type it in the calculator. Okay, now I need to get the little angle in here, and we have a formula for it, but if you don't remember the formula, you look at the picture, and the tangent of that little angle I just labeled rho is opposite j hat over adjacent. So what we do write on our paper is rho is the inverse tangent of j hat over i hat. And technically it's absolute value, so if our calculator gives us a negative angle, we're going to ignore that minus sign on this because we know it has to be a positive acute angle. So is everybody entering that on your calculators? I'll let you guys tell me what that is because I know you already know how you enter that. Madeline, what do you have? And we're going to write that down. That's not our final answer because that would be first quadrant. How do I get this purple part if I know this little black part right here? What's the geometry as you look at that picture? How do I get the purple if I know the little black part in there? Yo-yo, what do I have to do? Is everybody good with I'd have to take 180 to get to here plus rho to have the purple part? So I'm going to write that down. I'm going to say that theta is 180 plus rho. Now on your calculators, did you actually have positive 73 for that angle? So all you have to do, you've already got the plus 73, just do plus 180, enter. And does everybody have 253.546 degrees? So that would be our final answer. Got one other little thing I just want to remind you of on the calculator. If I had gotten and done some other calculations and realized, oh, whoops, I hadn't stored J hat or whatever, remember you can always scroll back up, use your up arrow. Maybe I wanted to store R for some reason or I, I scroll up to whatever you want to recopy is highlighted and then hit enter and then you can do whatever you want to that you can add something to it you can store it but you don't have to do the whole calculation all over again if your calculator has a negative angle on um, for the inverse tan and sometimes you will get a negative if you need it to be a plus just do times negative one or if it's a minus and you really need 180 minus that angle you've already got minus that angle just type in the plus 180. So just kind of think about what it means and how you what you have to do to get it to be what you want it to look like. Any questions on this? From now on then, when you are adding vectors, I want you to include the rectangular form and the polar form and circle both of those. And when you do the polar form, I need it to be a positive number out here in front and a positive angle in here. We're not ever going to put negative angles in there on our final answers for polar form. So you guys ready to work on homework? <laughs>